so we are considering phase equilibrium in a unary system unary means it's a single component system it's a single component it's a single component system it has only one component now if it has only one component then something interesting can be done because we know chemical potential so mu is the chemical potential right so mu is the chemical potential which can be defined in terms of we have defined chemical potential various times so we have defined with respect to say for example this is the change in energy with respect to change in mole number of species i keeping nj that is not equal to species i that is all other species concentrations or mole numbers constant entropy constant volume constant after we define the gibbs free energy we told mu is nothing but change in gibbs free energy as a change in mole number of again mu i so if i tell mu i mu i is the change in uh, mu i is the chemical potential so it is the chemical potential mu i is the chemical potential of species i now chemical potential of species i is nothing but partial derivative of gibbs free energy with respect to mole number of species i that means how the gibbs free energy will change as a function of mole number of species i means if there is a small change in the mole number of species i keeping nj that is all other species mole numbers constant temperature constant right temperature constant pressure constant and all other species mole numbers constant right so this is how we define the chemical potential of species i however or a component i you can call it species i or component i but when we have a single species or a single component you have a single component or a single species or a single compound so it's like a pure species right so it's like a pure silicon or pure iron or pure water right so it's like a so there is no no nothing else in the mixture right it's only n moles of one component right n moles of one component and one component only so this is basically like we are looking at phase change or phase transition in a single component system which is a pure system so in that way it's a pure system so pure means it can be like pure iron there is no mixture with carbon or anything else right so it's pure iron or you can think of pure silicon or you can think of pure alumina right or water so when whatever you are talking about here we are thinking of whether it's a compound or an element we are looking at pure system there is no mixture so note that now if that is so then the molar free energy so molar free energy is g by n right the n moles of one component right only one component so in a unary system in a unary system g by n is free energy it is free energy per mole which can also be written as gm or g bar now gm or g bar is now basically i can write this as g by n right so it's, it's an intensive property so i can write it as delta g by delta n i can write it also as a derivative of g with respect to n at constant temperature and pressure right del, del g del n which gives me mu so g by n which is an intensive quantity it's a molar free energy that is free energy per mole is identical with the chemical pot potential of the component that is present in the system since there is one component then therefore we are not using any subscript here so we are not using any subscript here right because there is only one component mu so mu or gm now have become one or identical so chemical so chemical potential in a unary system is the same as molar free energy of the system
ओके नाउ एज वी नो दैट डी जी इज इक्वल टू वी डी पी माइनस एस डी टी प्लस म्यू डी एन राइट डी जी राइट इट्स अ टोटल डिफरेंशियल एंड इट्स एन एग्जैक्ट डिफरेंशियल इक्वल टू वी डी पी माइनस एस डी टी प्लस म्यू डी एन राइट इन इन वीक फोर लेक्चर्स इफ यू लुक एट द लज इन द ट्रांसफॉर्म हाउ यू डिराइव दिन पोटेंशियल एंड देन हाउ यू एक्सप्रेस दो एक्जैक्ट डिफरेंशियल राइट वेयर वी हैव मेकेनिकल रिजर्वर एंड थर्मल रिजर्वर देन इट बिकॉज वी डी पी माइनस एस डी टी प्लस म्यू डी एन राइट नाउ इफ आई Since I have a single component, I can write dg by n, okay, which is nothing but dgm, right? So it's nothing but dgm equal to dg by n, which is again now if I do dg by n, so everything volume becomes divided by n, right? Volume by n, so if it is v by n, it is equal to vm. Similarly, s by n. right all of these are intensive properties because these are ratios of total entropy by total mole number so this becomes sm so you have vm dp minus sm dt but now you have mu you have mu which is already uh, an intensive property but now you have dn and you are doing uh, so but it's a single component system so n by n becomes 1 so it is d of 1 so this term goes to so this term does not exist right and dgm is nothing but d mu right this is equal to d mu so and because this guy goes to zero now you have for a single component system or a unary system you have d mu basically you have d mu which is equal to vm dp minus sm dt right this is not differential form Right, change in mu in a differential form can be expressed. So it's a, it's a, it's again an exact differential, and d mu equals v m d p minus s m d t. And again, it's a chemically homogeneous, right? Because it's a unary single single component system. It's a chemically homogeneous system, right? Everywhere chemically it is identical, right? It's a, if it is iron, it is always iron, right? Wherever. So iron in BCC form, but the composition is iron. right if if uh, or the right the atoms of iron only we are considering considering in a bcc form right in the bcc crystal structure if it is fcc iron bcc iron is called ferrite or fcc iron is called say austenite so austenite or ferrite all of these are for the pure element iron right there is no other component in the mix right so that's why that's why i am again and again repeating so that you understand the nuances here this is why we can use chemical potential or molar free energy in an interchangeable way so basically there is no distinction here between chemical potential and molar free energy right so now as you have already seen before the if i look at the from this equation so if this is the equation that you are talking about so this is called say unary say so let us call this equation unary now from this unary equation you can write the partial derivative right this is a total this is a total derivative it's a, right it's an exact differential it's a total derivative d mu equals to vm dp minus sm dt now if i fix pressure right if i fix pressure then dp goes to zero and you have del mu del t equals to minus of sm now sm is molar entropy which is always positive right which is always positive so change in chemical potential or molar free energy with temperature at fixed pressure is given by minus sm as you can see if mu is plotted as a function of t so you look as look at this curve if mu is plotted as a function of t then del mu del t at constant pressure is minus sm which is basically the slope of this curve so if i have this curve i go to any point and i uh, i go to any point and draw so i basically get the slope and the slope as you can see since sm is always greater than 0 sm greater than 0 so minus sm means it's always negative right the slope is negative as you can see here the slope is negative
right? The slope has to be negative here, as you can see here, right? So, <coughs> because this is minus SM and SM is greater than C. Similarly, again, from Maxwell relations or uh, from the different uh, the, 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 the partial derivative properties, we know that del SM del T is nothing but CP by T, where CP is the molar. CP here is stands for molar heat capacity. Right, it is molar heat capacity. Means heat capacity per mole of the substance under consideration or phase under consideration. So, del SM del T is CP by T, right? Del SM del T is CP by T, and you have del mu del T, which is minus SM, and as you can again, I just want to tell you that this is a negative slope and this is negative because this is minus. There is minus and SM is always greater than 0. Do not forget this part, right? The entropy, the molar entropy for this phase will always be greater than 0, right? So, 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 if molar uh, entropy is greater than 0, minus SM is basically going to be negative, right? The slope is negative. So, you can check that. But now you have this condition also. Right, del SM del T P again constant pressure. You have CP by T. Now you can combine these two equations. Right, combine these two. So if I combine these two, what do I get? I get instead of SM, I am putting. So yeah, I know SM. So I just do del mu del T again. I do del del T of del mu del T at a constant pressure. So this becomes equal to minus del SM del T. Right. So basically. I have del mu by del T which is equal to minus SM. So, what I am now doing which is constant pressure that I am doing del del T of del mu del T again at constant pressure this becomes del 2 mu del T square which is nothing but minus del SM del T right it, it is del 2 mu del T square right del del T of del mu del T is nothing but del 2 mu del T square I will just erase this so that it, there is no space constraint so basically again to tell you del 2 mu del T square with pressure constant is nothing but del del T of del mu del T pressure constant which is nothing but minus del SM right del T P which is nothing but Cp by the minus sign. So, del T mu del T square is minus CP by T, right? This is a minus CP by T. So, del T mu del T square basically gives what? It gives me the curvature. So, this gives me the curvature of mu T curve, right? Gives me the curvature and this gives me the slope of mu t which is always negative because sm is greater than c now and this gives me the curvature right curvature means basically we are looking at how the curvature how the how the how the uh, shape will look like right so because we have a is it a positive it's a negative curvature right in general cp is positive temperature is positive so minus cp by t means it has a negative curvature see it has a negative curvature now let us go to constant temperature so if i fix temperature so i'll just remove this part because it will clutter the stuff i have to share the slides later so if you see now del mu del pt is equal to vm right because if you look at this equation unary right labeled as unary you see del mu del p at constant temperature so if you look at that this dt is 0 and del mu by del p is nothing but v now if i plot mu as a function of p then you get say some curve like this 
again for solid liquid and gas it will be different right the molar volume change in the solid or in the liquid will be much much smaller compared to gas right so del mu by del p will give you uh, it is a schematic curve it gives you a curve like this now if that is so again what is del 2 mu del p square which is nothing but del vm del p right because del mu del p is already vm so del 2 mu del p square is nothing but del vm del p which is minus vm into beta t where beta t is the isothermal compressibility it is the isothermal compressibility so remember beta t has a negative sign here beta t has a negative sign here and there is also another negative sign here so you please tell me whether the slope will be increasing or decreasing if you look at this curve this is the slope right is the slope increasing or decreasing so this is something to think about right you think about it now for an ideal gas this vm can be written as rt by p right because p vm equals to rt right p vm equals to rt r is universal gas constant which is 8.314 joules per mole kelvin right and vm is rt by p and now if you have that you have this equation where is the equation here d mu equals to vd vm dp minus sm dt now if you have this equation so you are integrating with from initial state to final state again i want to tell you initial to state to final state depends only on the states it does not depend what path has been followed whether it's an irreversible path or a reversible path does not matter so in the case of ideal gas or perfect gas sometimes in books it is called or perfect gas now you have d mu which is rt dp by p again integrating from initial to final state which is rt ln pf by p right so basically if i know the final pressure if i know the initial pressure so basically i know the change in mu right from the initial state to the final state or change in molar free energy from the initial state for, uh, and the, uh, the the change in molar free energy um, when uh, uh, between the final state and the initial state right change in molar free energy between the final state and the initial state now i will look at the driving force for phase transition for example this phase transition which is alpha transforming to beta or beta transforming to alpha again depends on the temperature now if i tell that the temperature of transition is tc or tr then at tr alpha and beta are in equilibrium at tr alpha and beta are in equilibrium now think of this that a solid is converting to liquid solid instantly does not 100 solid does not convert to 100 liquid there will be during the process of solidification you will see that there is a zone between alpha and beta which is basically having a combination of alpha and beta so basically it is not like so alpha and beta coexist right so at the at the transition temperature at the transition pressure again i have to define a transition pressure now at the transition temperature at the transition pressure what will happen the total amount of substance cannot be destroyed. The total amount of substance remains as it is. However, at the transition temperature and pressure, you will have a combination of alpha and beta, right? It's a mixture of two phases, right? However, both phases are unary. That means both phases contain only one component, but both phases are possible, right? At the transition temperature and pressure. Now, if I tell the total number of substance in the system is n or n moles of total substance is what we are considering. So, I can tell in, we have out of these n moles, n alpha moles of alpha and n beta moles of beta. So, and we also know that mu alpha Tp and mu beta Tp are basically the molar free energies of alpha and beta as a function of temperature and pressure, right? Mu alpha Tp is the molar free energy of alpha the function of temperature and pressure and this is mu beta which is thin, right so n alpha is the mole fraction of alpha phase remember this is not not a, n alpha is the amount of alpha phase so basically if i tell i know the total amount which is n so n alpha by n 
this quantity signifies what? So, n alpha by n basically tells you a fractional quantity that is a quantity that is which is basically the amount of alpha in terms of mole fraction. Again, if I know the density or molar volume, I can also convert to volume fraction, right? So, basically n alpha by n quantifies the amount of alpha phase in the system or the fraction of alpha phase in the system or phase fraction, right? n alpha by n. So, this is fraction of alpha phase. This is a fraction of alpha phase. Similarly, n beta by n is a fraction of beta phase, right? Now, if I know mu alpha, mu alpha is the molar free energy of alpha phase. Now, if I multiply with the amount of moles of alpha phase that is n alpha, so I get g alpha which is n alpha mu alpha at a given temperature and pressure. Similarly, I can write g beta equals to n beta mu beta. Now, total g is g alpha plus g beta which is n alpha mu alpha plus n beta mu beta. Now, if I have this, I can basically write a differential. So, this is dg alpha plus dg beta. So, now I can first collectively, I, I can first calculate dg alpha. What if this is g alpha and this is g beta? So, basically what we want to see is dg alpha is minus s alpha again. This is SM, right? Molar, molar entropy. So, molar entropy of the alpha phase times the amount of alpha phase times dt, again Vm alpha, n alpha, dp, and mu alpha, dn alpha, right? Mu alpha, dn alpha, right? This n alpha, please note that this, this n alpha does not denote a component but the amount of phase alpha present in the system. Similarly, I can write for dg beta, which is minus s beta n b the dt plus vm beta n beta dp plus mu beta dn beta. Now, the degree or extent of transition, right, the extent of transition again is given by the internal process variable or this extent of transition now I can define as zeta which is an order parameter which is n beta by n, right. So, this is the extent of transition from alpha to beta. We are writing zeta which is n beta by n. Now, if you uh, and 1 minus zeta is n alpha by right now see zeta is an order parameter which basically tells you the amount of beta phase and the amount of alpha phase in fraction right phase fraction of alpha phase phase fraction of beta phase in terms of moles right if we if we, if we, if we give the molar volume information then you can also uh, give it in terms of um, uh, uh, volume fraction of the phase right in terms of volume fraction of the phase now, at constant temperature and pressure, as you know, dg is mu alpha dn alpha plus mu beta dn beta, right? All this SDT is and VDP, the dp, dt all go to 0, right? So, dg just becomes mu alpha dn alpha plus mu beta dn beta. Now, zeta is mole fraction or volume fraction of beta, right? That's what we are telling, right? So, zeta is the extent of trans tra transition, but zeta can also be defined as the mole fraction or volume fraction of beta. Now, if I express G of the mixture in terms of N, P, T and zeta, you know, I can write this is N alpha. So, you have G, right? So, it is G is N alpha mu alpha, right? So, basically, I am writing N 1 minus N into 1 minus zeta, right? 1 minus zeta is basically the mole fraction, right, which is n n beta by n, right. So, 1 minus theta is n alpha by n, right. So, into mu alpha, right, into mu alpha, right. And uh, this is the g and this will be n theta mu beta as a function of temperature and pressure. Now, if I write this, basically I can write this like alpha is my parent phase. So, I can take alpha phase out. So, this becomes n mu alpha tp right n mu alpha tp plus n times zeta where zeta is a internal process variable which represents the volume fraction of beta n zeta times mu beta minus mu. right so if i take n zeta common so n zeta common then i have mu beta minus mu alpha right mu beta minus mu now, if I do this, then I can write mu as a function of T, P and zeta. Zeta is the order parameter, which is, which is equal to G by N, N, T, P and zeta, which is basically 
mu t p basically gives you mu alpha t p and zeta times delta mu t p right delta at mu is nothing but a chemical potential difference which is basically mu beta minus mu alpha right mu. so d mu we can also write del mu del zeta is basically delta mu right so we can write d mu as a function of temperature and pressure is nothing but delta mu times d zeta right and the driving force right driving force for this alpha beta transformation is given by minus of del mu del zeta or del g bar del zeta which is basically nothing but at constant temperature and pressure which is nothing but delta mu right delta mu is the driving force minus of delta mu right minus of delta mu and this 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 we can clearly understand right minus of delta mu is the driving force right so because if there is a chemical potential difference or if there is a potential difference then something flows right and the driving force is the negative of this potential difference right so d is equal to minus of del mu del zeta now if i think of this i have this beta phase if you see this clearly this is my beta phase and this is my alpha phase now you see we have this transition temperature dtr right and this is my beta phase and this is my alpha phase so this is my alpha phase this is my beta phase and beta phase is transformed to alpha phase so beta phase is transformed to alpha phase or alpha phase can transform to beta phase now think of this d is minus delta mu right and delta mu is mu beta minus mu alpha now if just look at this picture now if you see there is a transition temperature at which this is the alpha beta coexistence right this is the alpha beta coexistence point now if you are below ttr you are seeing beta is having more energy per mole than alpha so beta will transform to alpha right beta will transform to alpha now so here beta will transform to alpha and d is equals to minus delta mu right so which is basically minus delta mu which is mu beta minus mu alpha mu beta is greater than mu alpha so beta will transfer to alpha now if i go above ttr so basically d is minus delta mu but now you see that the alpha phase has higher energy than beta phase alpha phase has higher energy or higher mu than beta phase so this is mu beta minus mu alpha so as you can see this is minus of delta mu where delta mu is mu beta minus mu alpha which is nothing but mu alpha minus mu beta and mu alpha minus mu beta is positive so as a result alpha will try to transform to beta along this line right alpha will try to means along some line along some path alpha will try to transform to beta so as you can see uh, below tm it is beta which is having higher chemical potential or beta which is having higher molar free energy on the other hand when you are above well above transient temperature you see that the alpha phase right this is the alpha phase this is the alpha point and this is the beta point so basically definitely the beta phase has lower free energy than alpha and the driving force is such that alpha phase spontaneously transforms to beta right here alpha phase spontaneously transforms to beta here beta phase spontaneously transforms to alpha here so beta transforms to alpha here and alpha transforming to beta is here right now if t is greater than transition temperature as you can see this is what i have written here mu beta is less than mu alpha delta mu which is mu beta minus mu alpha is less than zero so d is minus delta u which is greater than zero right which is basically greater than zero so alpha phase that means what so basically what i am telling is if t is greater than tr then alpha phase is basically d is positive right d is positive that means alpha phase is thermodynamically unstable 
as you can see here thermodynamically unstable and transforms to beta phase so if t is greater than tm mu beta is less than mu alpha right it has the lower free energy or lower free energy per mole now delta mu is the driving force which is mu beta minus mu alpha which is like basically uh, less than zero so minus of delta mu will be greater than zero minus of delta mu is the driving force and that is greater than zero so as a result what happens if the driving force is greater than zero alpha phase is thermodynamically unstable and spontaneously transforms to beta phase now think of if t less than tr then mu beta is greater than mu alpha so delta mu which is again mu beta minus mu alpha is now greater than zero so d which is minus of delta mu is less than zero now if that means what we are telling is if t is less than tr so see this is where t is greater than tr this is the case t is greater than tr now i am going to t is less than tr so this is the case now think of alpha changing to beta which is thermodynamically not possible because alpha um, uh, alpha is a more stable phase beta is the unstable phase right so alpha is the thermodynamically stable phase so alpha does not transition to beta Al if alpha transitions to beta it will require al means if if beta if alpha is transformed to beta then it will require um, uh, uh, some sort of a uh, 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 push uh, from outside so that alpha can transform to beta right it has to be uh, it cannot be a spontaneous process alpha to beta transformation when t is less than tcr alpha to beta transformation when t is less than tcr is definitely not a spontaneous process why because d is negative and alpha itself is a thermodynamically stable phase so if i want to convert a thermodynamically stable phase to a thermodynamically unstable phase then basically i require to supply some enormous amount means i don't know means we haven't quantified yet that uh, we will quantify but d is less than zero so this ha it, it is impossible for alpha to spontaneously transform to beta however it is some it is possible to do some work on the system so such right do some chemical work or some such work or mechanical work on the system so that the 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 the, the alpha phase which is a thermodynamically stable phase transforms to a beta phase right in general without any external force without any external stress this type of transition will never occur spontaneously right without external stress as transition does not occur that means it is not a spontaneous or a natural transition our natural transition is the one which does not require any external push right it does not require any external push remember the sign if d is positive then alpha phase or the uh, right if d is positive which is basically mu beta minus which is negative of mu beta minus mu alpha you can immediately understand that alpha phase is a thermodynamically unstable right so basically if i telling mu beta minus mu alpha and t is greater than tr if t is greater than tr alpha is a thermodynamically unstable phase right alpha is a thermodynamically unstable phase and it transforms to beta phase correct but here alpha to beta transformation alpha itself is a thermodynamically stable phase and it has to transform to beta which is not possible spontaneously however in a non spontaneous way if it is possible then you have to make some work done you have to make some work and um, uh, means pro provide some work from or ex external external force from outside for this reaction to happen and that force can be very large and uh, because alpha is the ground uh, uh, is the minimum energy state here right so alpha is the more stable phase than beta phase so alpha cannot does not transform to beta spontaneously so we will just add this term spontaneous okay so if t equals to transition temperature as you know that mu beta there is the molar free energy of or chemical potential of beta or molar free energy of beta because it's a unary system equal to molar free energy of alpha and therefore delta mu is basically zero if delta mu is zero driving force is zero if driving force is zero alpha and beta are in equilibrium and the transformation from alpha to beta or beta to alpha are equally likely on the other hand if t is greater than ttr then mu beta basically mu beta is less than mu alpha 
right if if it, mu beta is less than uh, mu alpha and delta mu is less than 0 and d is positive and as a result alpha phase which is thermodynamically unstable at this temperature right uh, t is greater than alpha phase which is thermodynamically unstable at this temperature will transform to beta phase so in this case in this case so we can write what is delta sir which is basically nothing but d by t which is basically mu alpha minus mu beta by t which is d minus delta mu by t now delta s ir will be equal to 0 at t equal to t right now note that how will this transformation at what rate will this transformation takes place we can now use a kinetic theory and tell del zeta del t is proportional to dr d by rt right where d is the driving force right d is the driving force del zeta by del t um, we can write is proportional to not r is not required d by t d by t. So, <clears throat> and d is the driving force remember. So, it is basically now telling the rate at which this transformation will take place or rate at which the liquid will, a uh, 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 starting liquid will completely convert to a starting solid. Say for example, um, or a starting alpha will completely, when alpha is thermodynamically unstable. So, alpha is thermodynamically unstable where? When the alpha is thermodynamically unstable when t is greater than tr right so it will spontaneously transform to beta uh, but at what rate it will transform is basically you can if you want that then you can insert this time right on this internal process variable or order parameter so this is basically evolution of order parameter this is evolution of order parameter as a function of time which is proportional to d by t again you do not have to care about the kinetic theory at all but what I am telling is that the how zeta will transform is a part of kinetic theory it is not a part of thermodynamics but in thermodynamics means uh, or equilibrium thermodynamics but in equilibrium uh, thermodynamics one thing you have to always appreciate that when we are talking about thermodynamics we are talking about driving forces we are defining driving forces right and this driving force basically if it is positive then you do have so if the driving force is positive then basically uh, then basically there will be a spontaneous transformation from one phase to the other right because the first phase the, f the initial so when when d is greater than 0 we can immediately see means we can immediately understand that the phase that has high energy is the is the unstable phase and we are looking at that unstable phase as starting point and we are trying to transform it to beta phase however this will proceed as a function of time how fast or how, how slow is not in the ambit of thermodynamics right so you have to use the kinetic theory and so as a result um, we can write this type of equations right so this is uh, now if i write this equation del zeta del t where delta sir is already defined as minus delta mu by t now if you can see dsir by vm right what is d delta s is d by t right delta s is d by t right so what i am trying to say and zeta d d zeta is what we write right so basically what i am trying to say is that this I can replace with dsir, so dsir by vm dt equal to d by t del zeta, uh, so d by t del zeta or d zeta vm dt, right. So, this, this is basically rate of, so this equation is called rate of molar entropy production, which I will describe later, right, rate of molar entropy production. Now, if we think of driving force as a function of temperature and pressure, then you can see the driving force. If you look at d mu alpha, d mu alpha, so you have again you are looking at the transformation from alpha to beta or beta to alpha. Or beta to alpha. Now, if you look at d mu alpha, which is minus s alpha dt plus v m alpha dp and d mu beta which is minus s beta dt plus vm beta dp then you can write d of mu beta minus mu alpha so basically this is your equation say 2 
and this is one this equation number is one and then what you are doing is two minus one so you get d mu beta minus mu alpha equals to minus s beta minus s alpha dt plus vm beta minus vm alpha dp now which is basically d mu beta minus mu alpha is not nothing but d of the delta mu right so 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 d of mu beta minus mu alpha mu beta minus mu alpha is nothing but delta mu right it is nothing but delta which is basically s beta minus s alpha which is minus delta s dt and delta vm dp right which is vm beta minus vm that's right now you can integrate you can integrate so you know the del d of delta mu so you can integrate delta mu as a function of say for example the time uh, so you can take limits as say you can think of p naught as the pressure right it's like p naught can be one bar right p naught is the reference pressure and t tr is the transition temperature and you are integrating up to some temperature t now if you have that it becomes minus delta s t p dt plus vm right again here p0 is the p0 is the uh, the standard pressure and now you are going to p bar and uh, and here t is constant as you can see so p0 to p uh, so here we are looking at delta vm dp and here it is delta s dt now at equilibrium delta mu has to be equal to zero now assume that for a phase transition delta cp is constant right there is no difference in delta cp so basically what i am trying to say that and beta t and alpha are also zero so i am i am i am simplifying the problem as much as possible so i have taken the isothermal compressibility to be zero alpha to be zero or insignificant and we are telling that for a phase transition delta cp there is a change in heat capacity for the or the difference in heat capacity between the alpha phase and the beta phase are basically we are assuming it to be constant right now in that case i can write del so from here i can write delta stp because delta is zero at t transition that right at the transition temperature and at the at at p0 uh, plus we can write delta cp times ln t by t right so that is your delta stp now you can also so right you require the delta stp information right you require the delta stp now this is how i am defining it right that because delta stp is nothing but the delta s0 which is basically the change in entropy at standard state that is which is a function of temperature transition temperature and p0 right and then there is this delta cp term with ln t by t0 right why this ln t by t0 why because we are looking at integration integration here and we are telling that there is a there is a so where from cp uh, dt is coming uh, uh, this term is coming is from del s del t which is basically cp by t then del s del t equal to cp by t so you are using this and you are using this and then if you integrate and now you have the molar volume again the molar volume change at t and p we are telling that it is the same as that at p0 and that is basically the same as delta vm0 now delta s0 is a change in molar entropy at the transition temperature and uh, p0 means p0 is the standard pressure and v and delta vm0 is a change in molar volume at transition temperature and again the p0 bar which is the reference pressure right reference pressure is p0 p0 can be one bar then delta mu i can integrate and again if you remember that this is very simple because we have taken alpha and beta t to be zero okay as for simplicity now you can integrate this and basically you get delta is zero here delta cp here and delta vm zero here right and there is a because vm dp right vm dp so delta vm dp so dp is basically p minus p naught p naught is your reference pressure p naught is your reference pressure in bar or it can be in atmosphere but remember p naught can be one bar it can be one atmosphere it can be anything and ttr is your transition temperature where both phases are in equilibrium 
right and now you are looking at delta mu now delta mu basically gives you the driving force right which is mu beta minus mu alpha right so it is giving you the driving force because d is minus uh, what is d we have defined it d is minus of delta mu right d is minus of so so you have d minus of delta mu and mu is nothing but here although we are talking about this delta mu is nothing but delta g bar you can call it also delta g bar or delta g m which is g m beta minus g m alpha right so this is delta mu is basically the difference in chemical potential between beta phase and alpha phase or difference in molar free energy between beta phase and alpha phase which is related to difference in entropy at the temperature of interest and pressure of interest and only thing when we do the integration please note that you have to take not only the transition temperature this is something sometimes you miss that you have to take the transition temperature as well as the pressure right you also have to take the uh, so in the case of dt your pressure is fixed at p0 in the case of dp your pressure change is also accounted for p0 to it goes to p right and then you do this integration and you take into account this equation so this is the equation so that it comes to del cp uh, delta cp and t by t now once you have done all of these and you have defined or you know these quantities then you can basically calculate it right delta mu only thing remember in this formula you can make it more complex you can take cp as a function of uh, b b temperature you can take alpha you can take uh, beta t that is a, the, 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 the isothermal incompressibility and then you will get basically uh, so then you will get a slightly more complicated equation for delta right slightly more complex equation for delta now if I look at this you do a little bit of algebraic manipulation which I have done here say for example I have taken t by tr to be z so z is at, so dz is 1 by tr dt and all this stuff then basically what you get is delta so delta mu that is the change in chemical potential between alpha phase and beta phase is basically related to the difference in specific the heat capacities of the two phases delta is 0 so delta is 0 is the difference in entropy of two phases at the reference temperature and reference pressure and then there is a t minus tr right tr is the ttr is the transformation temperature plus minus you have this term okay so it is like uh, delta c p t l and t by t r if you go through this if you go through this derivations you will easily understand this part and then this is nothing but delta v m 0 p minus p right so now remember delta is 0 and we have seen that just for the ice water problem and also other problems we have seen that so at uh, so delta is so at constant pressure delta is 0 is nothing but delta is 0 by t t r right so basically if that is so because delta h m as you can see here is equal to t t r delta s m so delta s m is delta h m by t t r so basically now you can write this equation delta c p delta t minus delta c p times t delta t by t r which is delta c f. so take the delta c p common delta t common so this becomes 1 minus t by t r which if i integrate which i get minus delta c p delta t square by t t r right because i get minus delta so you have delta c p where is that ha so when i am integrating so remember what i am trying to do here is this i am telling uh, so here you have delta c p delta t minus delta c p t delta t by t r so when it become delta t by t r it has one second so i have taken a small difference so basically you have this t l n t by t r oh, l n t by t r is gone so you have this so you just require to take delta c p delta t is common so this becomes 1 minus t by t r which is basically going to be delta t by t r so if i integrate i get 
So delta mu equals to minus of delta H0 plus delta Cp delta T by Tr into delta T, right? Uh, and delta Vm0 delta P. Now remember, this is one thing where there is an ln and you have done this. So how did you do this? Mm. You have ln here, delta Cp is here, T minus Tr. Achha. And then there is a delta Cp T, ln T by Tr. So mm, now we have taken this term. Yeah, so if you integrate, you get this term. So delta mu basically has a delta H zero term. There is a change in enthalpy at the tension temperature, and then it has this delta Cp delta T term. And so basically, this is nothing but a little bit of algebraic manipulation where we are talking about Cp and that the, the, the difference in specific the heat capacities. But we are not considering that this part, as you can see, it is simply delta V m zero into delta P. We are not considering any effect due to thermal expansion or isothermal compressibility right so that's the so next in the next lecture i will talk about order of phase transition and also i'll introduce this uh, phase diagram and the clausius clapeyron equation